Castaway, the powerful story of survival and the strength of the human spirit when in desperate situations. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, Castaway tells the story of Chuck Noland, played by Tom Hanks, a successful FedEx employer who is happily engaged to his loving partner, played by Helen Hunt, and has a bright future ahead of him. However, while on a FedEx flight transporting goods, his plane crashes, where he seeks refuge on an isolated tropical island. Chuck must use his resources and adapt to this new harsh surroundings in order to survive, with only a volleyball called Wilson to keep him company. After spending four years on the island, with his life now completely changed, Chuck decides that it's time for him to somehow get back to the society he has been lost from and disconnected to for such a long time. So seeing how everyone is in lockdown and cut off from the outside world, I thought now would be the perfect time to look into 10 things that you didn't know about Castaway. As being isolated can make you feel a little crazy. <laughs> but not me though. I'm not mad and even Wilson says I'm not mad. Isn't that right, Wilson? What? Oh, Wilson doesn't like you. No, 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 not you that's typing. No, not you either. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Wilson doesn't like you. Number 10, Castaway came to be because Tom Hanks read an article about FedEx. Tom Hanks said in a 2017 article with The Hollywood Reporter that Castaway was the product of three minds. Scriptwriter William Broyles, Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis, who previously directed Hanks in Forrest Gump, and Hanks himself. Although he claimed that it was he who came up with the idea of Castaway after reading an article about the FedEx company and how planes carrying FedEx packages fly over the Pacific three times a day, which got his mind wondering what happens if one of those planes goes down? And from there, Hanks grew intrigued of the concept of being stranded in a state of hopelessness for four years, without shelter or the modern comforts that we take for granted, and how the character would have to evolve and to learn to fend for himself. He also didn't want the story to be a traditional story of an obnoxious guy going for a life-changing experience where he then becomes a good guy, but more of an exploration of physical and spiritual growth and development. Number 9. The script writer became a real castaway. As mentioned, script writer William Broyles came on board as castaway script writer. Royalist had previously worked with Hanks on Apollo 13, as well as future Hanks-related projects such as Saving Private Ryan and The Polar Express, not to mention other movies like Jarhead and Flags of Our Fathers. And it wasn't a swift task for Hanks and Broyless to write the script either, as it took them six years to structure the story. In order to get more of an understanding of what it would be like to be a castaway, Broyles lived the part by isolating himself at Mexico's Sea of Cortez, where he learned to fend for himself and teach himself to do tasks so he could survive, like learning to crack open coconuts and even spearing some of the local marine life so he could eat. Yeah, his diet mainly consisted of stingrays. And Broyles found a Wilson volleyball washed up ashore, which is where the Wilson concept came from. But in all seriousness, actually living the life of a stranded castaway is some insane levels of commitment to the project when you think about it. But above all, Broilers discovered that the Chuck character would be going on much more of a spiritual awakening as much as a physical challenge. And even Wilson here agrees. Number 8. Filming had stopped for a year to make way for Hanks' physical transformation. During Castaway's pre-production, Tom Hanks deliberately gained some weight to play the Chuck character before his plane crash Castaway ordeal, where I guess the logic was to make the character a little out of shape and not very healthy, to add to the struggle of him having to adapt to the harsh terrain of the wild and fend for himself. Basically, to make his transformation even more drastic. Robert Zemeckis called action and filming the first part of the movie began in 1998. However, after filming the first half, Filming then came to a stop for a year so Hanks could physically transform and lose all the weight and get in shape, as well as growing his big bushy Hanks beard. During the year that Castaway was on pause, Zemeckis took time to direct another movie, that being the Hitchcockian supernatural thriller What Lies Beneath. 
And when Castaway jumps to its second half, it really is quite jarring to see Hanks' physical transformation and just how lean and fit he got. Number 7. FedEx claims its presence is not mere product placement in Castaway, but much more. Given that a huge subplot in Castaway involves a FedEx plane crashing, you would think that the real-life transport company would not be so hot on the idea of their brand being used and that Castaway's production would have to create a fictional transporting goods company. However, FedEx was surprisingly more than happy for their company to be used for Castaway and even allowed filming at their Moscow, Memphis and LA headquarters. Over the years, it's been spoken among fans of the movie that Castaway is basically a product placement vehicle for FedEx. After all, the entire events of the movie revolve around the company. However, FedEx say otherwise. A spokesperson for the company told the Chicago Tribune that they don't see FedEx as an advert in Castaway, but more they see the company as being a character itself within the film. I guess you could say much like Wilson. So what do you guys think? In your face advertising or dramatic humanizing of a company? Well, as with all art, it's in the eye of the beholder. Nah, that'll be silly. Number six, filming location. The harsh, beautiful paradise that was used for filming was an island in Fiji called Monuriki. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Due to the island being uninhabited, it proved to be the perfect location for filming. However, since the release of Castaway, the quiet little island isn't so quiet anymore as thanks to Castaway, it has become a popular tourist attraction where fans of the movie want to visit the place where Tom Hanks and Wilson were supposedly stranded for four years. Castaway's production was actually pretty transatlantic, with filming also taking place in Moscow, as mentioned. And ironically, the movie starts and finishes in Texas. Number five, by sheer coincidence, a similar TV show came along. Several months before Castaway was to be released, CBS aired the reality game show Survivor, which incidentally had a similar plot to Castaway, in which contestants would be stranded on a tropical isolated island, where they would have to work as a team to survive, as well as going on challenges against fellow teams, and the show became a massive hit. This might have made some people involved in Castaway's production panic, but not Tom Hanks, as he believed that Survivor or not, Castaway was a special movie that tells a special story, as opposed to Survivor, which was a game show. Incidentally, an Australian movie came out one year earlier in 1999 called Dear Claudia, starring Brian Brown, which actually has a very similar plot to Castaway, in that it's about a plane crash which causes characters to be stranded on an isolated tropical island. Only Brown's character isn't a FedEx worker, but a mailman. And like Castaway, our stranded heroes are stuck on the island, accompanied with a heap of goods that was in the process of being transported. Once again, in Castaway, it's FedEx goods, but in Dear Claudia, it's mail. And the movie plays more like a romantic comedy. It's almost like in 1999 and the year 2000, there was some kind of psychic link with the human race, where we suddenly became fascinated with the concept of being stranded on an uninhabited island. However, something Dear Claudia and Survivor didn't have was Wilson. Oh, sorry, Wilson. Sorry. Wilson said that he wanted me to put him down before he destroys my soul. Yeah, you don't want to upset Wilson. He's scary when he's angry. Number four, Tom Hanks suffered a potentially dangerous injury. While filming in Fiji, Hanks cut his leg, but thinking it was nothing, just a minor cut, he left it. However, the cut got infected and made him quite ill, with him almost getting blood poisoning from the wound. When Hanks went to a doctor, the doctor flat out called him an idiot for not doing anything about the cut, as it actually could have killed him. <laughs> Yikes. So, yeah, this wasn't some minor cut. This was actually a big deal. So much so, the production on Castaway had to come to a stop for three weeks, so Hanks could heal and get better from his ordeal. Hanks said that the doctors had to cut out a heap of, quote, stuff out of his leg, which left him bedridden in the hospital for three days. But thankfully, Hanks fully recovered and could get back to filming. Yeah, I'm just happy that, uh, nothing else has affected Tom Hanks' health. 
<laughs> yeah, I am just glad he hasn't encountered any other problems that could put his health in jeopardy. <laughs> oh, come on, Wilson. Don't look at me like that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That was pretty awkward. Number three, Wilson Mania. One of the most memorable aspects associated with Castaway is the Wilson Volleyball, who is stuck on the island with Chuck and becomes his only friend and companion, with Chuck even giving him a face. Wilson is a reflection of Chuck himself, his internal crisis of isolation. And the scene where Wilson quote unquote dies is actually one of the saddest moments in the film. Yeah, a ball. But still, I guess that's because in losing Wilson, Chuck lost hope. However, Wilson has gone on to become so much more than that, as it seems the world just can't get enough of Wilson. He even got parodied multiple times on shows like Family Guy. He even featured on the Scary Movie 2 poster, and I don't even remember seeing him in that movie. In fact, I even posted a picture of me and Wilson on Facebook, to which someone commented that Wilson is the greatest supporting character ever. In fact, people love Wilson so much, in 2015 when Hanks attended a hockey game in New York, he was reunited with his long-lost island buddy at last. A grand moment for all fans of the movie. In fact, one of the actual Wilson balls used for Castaway was sold at an auction for over $18,000. To put it bluntly, the world never really got over Wilson. So Wilson, tell us, how are you enjoying your newfound fame? What? I'm not saying that. Okay, okay, okay. Wilson wants you all to know that he is single and looking. Uh, Wilson, I'm not saying that. Okay, fine, fine. Wilson is looking for someone who enjoys playing with balls. All right, Wilson, that's it. You've gone too far. Number two, finding the right conclusion. Hanks claimed that it was a bit tricky to come up with a satisfying ending for Castaway and how to leave the Chuck character by the time the credits roll. They didn't know whether or not to make him become a Hollywood celebrity thanks to the newfound fame the character had, or to leave him full of sadness and remorse over his ordeal, or for him to just simply be in awe of this new world and how times have changed since he was stranded. I actually really like the ending that we got. Chuck sort of seems a lot more humble than before, more self-aware of his surroundings, but to be honest, I don't really know what's going on with the character. There seems to be so much mystery and so much uncertainty. I always felt like when the character returned, he seemed unsure of things, but that's the beauty of the ending. And it's symbolized in the crossroads shot at the end, where Chuck has to choose his new destination. He himself, like the audience, is uncertain of things, and now he must choose his destiny. Or at least that's what I take from it. But still, what was in that final package he delivered? I've had many a sleepless nights thinking about just what on earth was in that damn package. Number one, cast away with success. After years of pre-production and a year's halt during the shoot, Castaway was finally released in December in the year 2000 and made an impressive $429 million on a $90 million budget and the film was instantly praised by critics and fans alike. It was praised for taking director Robert Zemeckis' style of filmmaking into new, bolder, more mature territories as well as having an intelligent, thought-provoking script. Castaway was even nominated for and won several awards including Tom Hanks who was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor and composer Alan Silvestri even won for best score, even though music in Castaway is used very sparingly. But regardless, Castaway hit a nerve with people. It became an instantly recognized and much loved movie. A film that demonstrates a strange dire situation which the audience can relate to, as it shows the true survival of the human soul, which in turn makes it a very uplifting and positive movie experience. Wilson, don't pick your nose and eat it. Wilson, stop it. So that was my look into Castaway. And I love this movie. It's actually surprisingly an emotional, powerful story and quite moving and thought-provoking in places. It kind of holds a mirror up to the audience and asks, what would you do in that situation? It made being stranded on an island for a long time feel real as it makes the viewer feel the desperation, determination and hopelessness that comes with it making it a powerful experience. And as you can see, I'm having a ball. 
Sorry, Wilson. Anyway, I'm Minty, and um, apparently Wilson's now taking over the show, and I have to get out of here before he banishes me to the pit. See ya.